Now, just having the students comprehend this took a lot of time, but you didn't stop there. You wanted them to really grapple with the text, because your, um, your task that is about you know, understanding what he's saying, but also asking the question, have we achieved that vision in our country? Which means they have to really compare what he's saying and the intent of his vision to where we are now, which means really having a deep understanding of what he said mm -hmm. and what he wanted um, beyond just what's in the text and compare it today. So how did you get the students to really think about it? What was sort of your structure for that? To bridge their, from their understanding and the comprehension of the speech to where we were going to have them analyze and make a presentation and even write something, we created a foldable that had several different questions for them to find evidence from the text and then add their thinking to it. Uh, the basics like who, what, when, where, why, but then also the wow moments of the speech. They had to determine what quote or paragraph was really that key part of the speech. And then they started to notice figurative language throughout the speech, and they wrote that evidence as well. What's neat about this is on the right-hand side, you have the who, what, where, when. But then on the other side, you have why, wow factors, uh, figurative language evidence. So this is the more analytical. So you're already sort of scaffolding and pushing them, maybe without them even realizing it, you know, making sure they know this, they can't do this without this, but then this is part of it. And then on the back is what? The 20 word summar summary of the entire speech. They had to break it down. Into 20 words. So now, uh, you know, this, for some people, this might be the project, but you were going much further than this. Right. Tell us about how, what came next. Well, like I said before, we watched the teaching channel. We watched the um, evidence and arguments um, video from the teaching channel. It was a high school level video, but I knew that our kids had experience some with, with PowerPoint from their computer class that they have during activity. So I, I, knew, I felt confident that they could come in and create a one-slide PowerPoint presentation as a group. So they weren't creating a whole PowerPoint presentation. No. Just one slide. A group of kids got together and they just created one slide as a group. So that was the sort of, for this element of the unit, that was like a, a mini task. That was that a They had task. to do. It wasn't the end of yes. the unit, no. but that was one task, a stopping point right. that they were going to work towards for this section. What I wanted to do is um, I wanted to start incorporating some technology within it, some multimedia, and then I also wanted for them to get into the speaking and listening standards as well, so they knew that they were going to present their PowerPoint slide to their class as a group. Did you have to take time to teach PowerPoint? No. They actually um, take, as an activity class, they go to computer lab for a period of time, and that computer lab teacher teaches them how to do PowerPoint. So they came knowing... What grade level does that happen? Um, I believe that she starts that as early as second or third grade. That must make your life much easier and yes. allows you to do a lot more. It does. Okay, it does. That, that makes a lot of sense. And then um, from there, you know, with knowing, with the teachers having watched the Teaching Channel video with me and knowing what the expectation was for that PowerPoint slide, um, they went and created a graphic organizer to scaffold it for the kids so that the students would know, okay, this is my group. I'm doing the repetition group, for instance. Mm -hmm. And so these are the components that I need to have in that slide. This is, this is what I need to look for and put together. So then you took what was on the video, the teaching channel, and made it your own. That's right. And what did you do? What were the, the components of this uh, document or this activity? Well, there were several different groups that we split the kids up in, but they all had to have an understanding. Uh, and they came directly from the speech. The kids noticed lots of questions. The kids noticed repetition. The kids noticed that Lincoln was calling the North to action. And then we wanted to get some more of the literary aspects of imagery and tone and other forms of figurative language. And so the kids broke up and jigsawed again, reading the speech again, right. looking for that, and then answering the question of how did Lincoln's use of imagery help him make his point, help him have the North understand his vision for the country? What was the effect of, for the students in rereading the speech over and over and over again? Well, did they ever like say, are we reading it again? Was there any, any pushback? No, because there was a specific task 
I mean, it wasn't just like, let's get out our speech and read it again today. You know, <laughs> there was a task at hand, they had a job, and, you know, they did it. That's really what close reading is, right? It's reading for a specific purpose and really looking closely at a, maybe a smaller section and seeing how that section, you know, maybe talks about a, whatever purpose you have. And so with this, there was an end result. I mean, they wanted to do the PowerPoint. This was, this was awesome for them. You know, they, they wanted to present this and do this as a group. What were some of the things they were looking for again in their close reading? What were some of the different topics of the PowerPoint? Well, we came up with the list. As you know, the questions that he asked, uh -huh. um, imagery, any repetition, okay, things like calls that. to action, tone, tone and counter arguments. And counter arguments. So those were sort of the categories, and each group had to look at one of those yes. and see where are the examples. It would probably be too much to try to do all of those, so they just looked at one. So, so tell me about the PowerPoint. What did the PowerPoint look like? They, the kids, with their understanding of PowerPoint, knew that they only had to have one or two quotes, they had to explain what that meant for Lincoln, and then they had to tell what the main idea was. So we gave them a specific task and a checklist to follow, and that wasn't overwhelming and that wouldn't require more than one slide. And they put that, they also needed to find an image from the internet that they could copy and paste and put on their PowerPoint. And that project for them took about two days, but yeah. they loved it. They enjoyed it. Yes. And they had to incorporate a quote to yes. support their their decision about an example of repetition. Right. Or if they said, they're, you know, he uses repetition, repetition to do this, they had to have a quote to support it. Um, and then did they give each other feedback? They did. They were able to share their PowerPoints. In the, so a group would go up, and then the rest of the class had to listen. But I didn't want the listeners to just passively listen. They had to be involved, and they um, had a feedback form, so different kids were assigned different groups to listen to, and they had to give positive feedback, suggestions for improvement, and their idea for a grade. That idea also came from the Teaching Channel video. Okay, and we have all these documents posted. Um, I just want to finish this section. We have two examples of the analysis that we're going to post. One is a regular student, and another is a uh, special ed student. How did that work in terms of making tweaks or differentiating for those students? For the regular ed students, they had all six options to do of the tone, repetition, counter argument, etc. We broke it down for the EIP and special ed class, and we decided, we collaborated about what were going to be the most important things for them to get out of it. And so they had three. And basically through the process, there were more stops and goes. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get this far. Now let's all talk about it. Right. And then now let's go again. But it's still two days, right. just a lot more feedback from me and from their, their classmates. It's a lot more feedback. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you. So after this, we'll talk about how we transition into writing about it.